Well, well, favorite part of the week, because we know it's Friday, which means it's time for our pop culture duo, the Waynes. This week, as we hang with Wayne and Wayne, Walsh will talk to us about an action-packed movie. But first, it's Wayne Button talking about an action-packed book about football in honor of this uh, first week of football back. Here's an excerpt from Friday Night Lights by H.G. Bissinger. Um, that's Wayne Button reading it. Gaines huddled the team around him. He tried to be stoic, giving the familiar speech that no team was ever built around one player. But the thought of a serious injury to Booby not at him. He had been preparing for this season the moment the last one had ended eight months earlier. He was methodical and meticulous about everything, the kind of coach, the kind of man who prepared for every possible situation through tireless work. And now came something he had no control over. Wayne Button, good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. How you doing? Not too bad. How about you? I'll, well, I'm a little tired because I was up late last night uh, watching the first game of football this of year. Of course. <laughs> yeah, because you, you just, you don't only like reading about football, you like watching it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in fantasy football with my friends and, uh, I'm a big Patriots fan, so yeah, I like uh, watching it just as much as reading about it. All right, so this morning you're reviewing the sports classic. This is a book voted number one football book of all time, number four sports book of all time by Sports Illustrated. We're talking, of course, about this classic Friday Night Lights by H.G. Bissinger. Um, you know, so many books written about sports. What do you think that this one is rated so high? Uh, I think there's a couple reasons. You know, one, uh, it's, it's actually about young athletes in high school, and I think that's actually important because books about, let's say, superstars, it's really hard for us to relate to that, but I think the average reader can relate to high school athletics in some way. And also, where they're not famous, uh, the characters had to be developed and described to us, and we can really relate to these young athletes. Uh, the second reason I think is because it was based in Odessa, Texas. Now this was before, you know, this was 1990, so before the internet was really in everybody's home, before social media. So it allowed him to create almost this mystical place where people like myself up in Labrador are like, man, does this place even really exist? It, it almost sounds fictional. And unless you're from Texas, you wouldn't really know. And I think the third thing is he had a couple really good, you know, faith uh, storylines that happened, almost like it was meant, again, to be a movie or uh, a show, was, you know, typical star running back, they're going to win the whole season, and the star running back gets hurt right before the first game. Uh, and then even some fictional, almost fictional, sorry, storylines, like uh, it, it lead up to a three-way coin, uh, coin toss to see which team goes to the playoffs. So, you know, relating to young athletics, this mystical place in Odessa, Texas, and some really, you know, faith would happen uh, storylines, uh, I think that's what really made it probably the most popular book. And you, you talk here about Odessa, Texas. Um, it is kind of a random place. Been to Texas, never been there. <laughs> How did the author go about to research for this book? Oh, it was amazing what Buzz did. Uh, uh, he's known by his, uh, as Buzz Bissinger. But uh, it's amazing what he did because he looked into this place and he found that they won about four different state titles uh, in the 80s. Uh, and I think what he did compared to other authors was really good, which made the book amazing, was he didn't just parachute in, you know, investigate the story for a month and then take off. He actually took his wife his two kids and moved to Odessa for an entire year. Uh, and he did, you know, an immense amount of research on this. Uh, so he lived there for a year. He tells this crazy story uh, where he first showed up and it was actually just a little fun game between at East and West Texas All-Star game. And uh, a referee actually passed away during the game. And they continued to play the game. Not only did they continue to play the game, after the referee died, but uh, the coaches were looking at their watches, waiting for them to hurry up and get the person off the field so they can play football. And he said that's when he knew like this was something serious, like he was in a really serious place when it came to football with that story. So he did amazing research. I would say it. so. <laughs> that's, that's pretty serious. 
That's um, pretty intense. Yeah. Do, do you know if any of the players at the time make it to the pros? or? Uh, the one one main character uh, in the book made it to Division One, and a character that wasn't in the book, but uh, the backup to be the next year went on to really, really well, and he actually went on to play professional for about five years. So, yeah, it's pretty tragic. You know, here you have these uh, young athletes that were built up so well in the, in the story, and, yeah, none of them went on to go on to be pro at all. Hmm. And, and how does the book match up with this popular show that was made out of that story and the movie also? Well, I mean, it goes to show you how, how, how important the book is because the movie and the show weren't, wasn't even made until about 15 years after the book was released. Um, wow. So this so, was a show, yeah, exactly. So it was still popular and they decided to make, but it's probably the one, you hear about movies and shows and People say the book was way better or the movie was way better. I think they're really at par with each other because the movie didn't change a whole lot. There was some dramatic effect, but the ending and everything was the same as the book. So I got to say, if you like the book, you'll probably like the movie, and vice versa. If you like the movie, you'll probably like the book. Maybe Walsh will review it some way. <laughs> well, I'm one of those who've seen the movie, and I was kind of a bit addicted to that series. So at this point, should I read the book? I'm wondering. You totally should. You know, even though it's uh, 30 years later, like I said, it's like I haven't read a ton of sports books. So, you know, I can't rank it like Sports Illustrated did, but it's honestly like the best sports book I've ever uh, read before. Uh, I totally recommend it. 30 years later, it's still selling on average 5,000 copies a month. Uh, so it's wow. still popular. That's yeah, a lot of books. Still, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Buzz Bissinger, Buzz Bissinger's making a lot of money in royalties with this uh, because it's still selling. They put it in a 25th edition five years ago. Uh, no, it's still an amazing book. It still holds up today. It just did back then. Well, I do have a short career in high school football, very short, about three weeks. I did the training, and then after the first game, I chickened out. Uh, they needed an extra player, and um, they didn't have any boys. And I, I'm, you know, those who know me, I'm almost six foot, and so I'm tall enough. So they thought, but I just, this is this is rough sports. This is a rough sports. So maybe I, maybe I should read that. Maybe you should, yeah. Maybe play basketball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Wayne, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. No problem, Rebecca. You have a good week now, okay? You too. And uh, that was Wayne Button, our book columnist. He's from Labrador City, and his uh, review today was a book from uh, Buzz Messenger's The uh, Classic Friday Night Lights. Well, we were watching TV. Well, Wayne Walsh has been watching TV. He's our TV nut. Uh, this week he's reviewing a skyscraper. So have a listen to part of that trailer. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Just a little nervous. Well, you look very handsome. I just don't want to screw it up, you know? You have been preparing for this meeting for six months. You've got this. Let me ask you guys a question. Daddy loves who? Me. Daddy loves who? Me! Me! Exactly. Daddy's gonna go make that bacon. Gross. Mr. Sawyer, is your family enjoying their stay? Very much so. They're shocked you gave us the entire floor. After your security assessment, what do you think of the building? With all due respect, he is a glorified security guard. Please. The Pearl is the tallest, most advanced building in the world. You've built a vertical city, but you brought with it every single safety and security challenge that I can think of. You thought this floor was empty? So did I. Not only have you brought them all indoors, but you've trapped them 240 floors in the air. No one really knows what would happen if things go wrong. But I'm just a glorified security guard, so the hell do I know anyway? What's going on? And uh, good morning, Wayne. Good morning, how are you? Good, good. Obviously, it's an action-packed movie that takes place in the skyscraper. Everything goes wrong. Have I summed it well? Yeah, it's the uh, women when I was talking over the last couple of weeks, I think we can remember I was trying to find that good action movie and I've been trying to put in a bit of that for every week and I finally found one that is exactly what I was looking for. 
something where you can sit down, you can go for the good guy, you can uh, watch the explosions, you can figure out the thrilling part of the end, if he's going to do it, how he's going to do it, and that sort of thing. So Skyscraper was one that I found that actually would work for that if you're looking for like a little thriller, action, that sort of type of movie. Yeah. Stars Rock, Dwayne Johnson, so, you know, it's uh, being acted the same way Barack does all his movies as a hero that can do super special things. But in this movie, they actually did something different. I figured they were sitting around the table and they were saying, Barack does everything and he makes it look easy. What are we going to do in this one? Let's take his leg away. So actually, he's an amputee uh, from the army who takes up a new job as being a security expert. And this multi-billion dollar um, pearl, they call it, skyscraper, hires him to check out their security and safety reasons. And um, you, what you'll see is that the bad guys show up and they want to get revenge on the big rich guy who did the uh, the skyscraper and action happens from there. And I did see that movie last year. And you got to admit, there are lots of like as if moment. Like, I mean, you're you're li you're watching this and I, I can remember being like as if this is like so it, it sort of flirts with unreal. Flirts? Oh, 100% unreal. <laughs> The, the man goes through a crane at one point and the doors are locked so he decides to climb it with one leg and then he runs the crane and he jumps from a crane to a building in, the, in just in the trailer alone it doesn't go as well as you think it would but you gotta watch it to see what happens yeah we won't all <laughs> wait but i mean it is it is uh so you like that you know like you're looking for that in a in an action-packed movie Yeah, and uh, I feel they went off the the holy grail of those kind of action movies with Die Hard movies. Now, I'm not, by no means am I comparing it to Die Hard, the greatest of all action movies and Christmas movies that you can get, but it got those little hints of those sort of things where it's just one guy against a bunch of uh, bad terrorists kind of thing, and this time his family's actually on the line, and uh, it's a race against time because the building's on fire, and... You know, everything you could see in a movie that would make someone have to, like, watch it and kind of get involved to see how is he going to do this sort of thing. Even though you know The Rock is always going to be the hero, it doesn't uh, doesn't go as easy or it's not a superstar as he should be or superpowers or anything like that. He's just an ordinary guy trying to trying to save his family more than anything. You, you know, you, you brought you brought on Die Hard, and it made me think of that, too. I mean, it's, it is in a building, and um, there's Asian connotation to the person who built it. Um, and there's this whole floor with, like, cascade and garden, which I thought, who, whose building has that? I've, I've yet to been, you know, set foot in a building like that. Yeah, um, the cinematography was really good. The action was good. You can sit down in your thing in, in your living room or your the theater area. I guess a lot of people have these days and listen to the explosions and get excited and throw your popcorn around and that sort of thing. So kind of like one of these cheesy, you know, it's going to be action and we're just going to sit down and enjoy it for what it is. Not yeah. the kind of movie you take apart in terms of being, <laughs> oh my God, he's never, that's not true. If you were going to watch a movie with that impression, you wouldn't like it, but It's kind of one of those ones where it's like a guilty pleasure where, oh, God, I love that explosion. I love this action, that kind of thing. So, Totally, totally. Now, you did see another action movie this week, a remake of the classic Charlie's Angel. And like most critics, you I don't think you appreciated it much. Am I right? Uh, I appreciate the Charlie's Angel series for what they are. They, uh, I'm a bit surprisingly young for the original series. That came out in the 70s, but I did get to see the Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz movie um, when they put it out in 2000-ish, which was kind of a, a more fun, action-y kind of Charlie's Angels movie with Drew Barrymore and stuff in it. But this one, I found that they tried to mess with the formula that Charlie's Angels was about. Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I'm just saying it kind of flirted away from what I was more used to with that type of movie where I was looking for it in actual terms to be a, a good action movie to review and the other thing about this movie that made it so special is that it was a completely female run endeavor in terms of Elizabeth Banks wrote the screenplay she uh, starred in it she produced it and that sort of thing which is 
incredible to see a woman in Hollywood doing these sort of things. But it's just that when you're used to the Charlie's Angels with the whole boss and the Bosley and this sort of thing, this movie moved it to be not the special characters, but ranks in almost an international organization of all kinds of Charlie's Angels. And I don't think the show or any other show like that focused or made outside the box like that. And it kind of took away from a bit because the main characters, the name Charlie's Angels, if you remember, the three lady super superstar cops, international saver ladies. And then you got your Bosley and your, your Charlie, who's, you never see Charlie, same as all of them, but to have a bunch of Bosleys was a bit different to see. And uh, it kind of took away from it for me, and maybe I took it uh, too much, as much as the Charlie Angels should be, where they moved away from it. Maybe I'm just older and appreciated the way it used to be compared to what it was new. Well, we'll let listeners make up their own decision on that one then. Thank you so yeah, much, Wayne. Where to go, but it's up to them they like it. So. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good weekend, and thank you for being there. You too. Thank you very much. And that's Wayne Walsh. He's our TV columnist.